Conservation of energy is a really well-known concept in physics because, well, energy is such a cornerstone of pretty much everything in physics. So the conservation basically means that we cannot create energy, we cannot destroy energy. All we can do is we can transform it and transfer it into other forms. We can transfer it using forces, electrical currents, heating and by using waves. In this lesson video we're going to focus on energy conversions so we're going to start off by reviewing the different types of energy. Lifting objects up gives them gravitational potential energy, like this ball. Charged objects have electrical potential energy, which is why they attract and repel. Chemicals have chemical potential energy, which is released when they react. And similarly, atoms have nuclear potential energy that can be released in a nuclear reaction. Notice that I've listed them all as potential energies. The energy is stored, awaiting release. They have the potential to do work, to make something happen. Other forms of energy have something happening already. Kinetic energy is for moving objects, like this ball rolling down the slope. Light energy, a kind of electromagnetic energy. Thermal energy relates to the movement or vibration of particles. Sound energy is the movement as well, really. I also want to mention internal energy, as it will come up again in a minute. Internal energy is the energy of particles in a material, and it is made up of the kinetic energy, such as the vibration of the particles when they're warm, and potential energy because the nuclei have charges, so there is some complex repulsion and attraction going on. Now, these can all be useful, but some are easier to produce than others. So we want ways to convert energy from one form to another. The jet engine is a great example of this. You might think that we just take fuel, so that's chemical potential energy, and convert it into kinetic energy, but it's quite a bit more complex than that. It starts at the front. Air goes in at the intake, so that air has some kinetic energy already. After the intake, the compression section squeezes the air into a smaller volume. This converts some of the kinetic energy into internal energy as the particles get closer together and change temperature. This is done to get the oxygen particles closer together, which will help the next step. The combustion chamber. In this section, Fuel is injected into the mix and it burns with the oxygen, converting chemical energy. So at the end we get a huge amount of kinetic energy out the exhaust. There's some waste of course, with heat being a big one, but light and sound will also be wasted. So, in one jet engine, we have a number of energy conversions. Ideally, we'd put in the kinetic energy and the chemical energy and get all of that out at the end as kinetic energy. If that happened, the fact that we have internal energy in the middle there doesn't matter because we get it back at the end. The problem, of course, is that some of the energy will be converted to heat, sound and light, and those energies are not wanted so they are waste. Heat, light and sound also have the problem that they get lost to the surroundings, spreading out, so we can't use them. This waste reduces the efficiency of the system. Now efficiency is calculated using efficiency equals useful energy output 
divided by the total energy input times 100%. Ideally, we'd get the waste down to 0% and therefore the efficiency up to 100% because all of that waste, well basically it just means we're burning more oil than we need to or we're mining more silicon for the solar panels or we're making more concrete for the dams. Every single bit that we're wasting is using up more of the world's resources that we need to, so we should be aiming for 100% efficiency whenever possible.